once again in the building with your boy, Connoisseur Big U, at another episode of the Open Ball Sports Talk Edition. What do we have for you this time? Um, you know, we give you usually sports from a New York Knicks fan's point of view. Most of the time we focus on basketball uh, and to that extent, Knicks basketball. But today we have a special episode. And what is it, you ask? Colin Kaepernick's recent NFL workout. So we all know the story, the history behind what has been happening with uh, one Colin Kaepernick, former NFL quarterback. He has been out of the league for the past three years. If you want to get into the um, small details about exactly what happened, how and why that happened, you know, you can Google and research that because I'm not going to go through a long list of what happened to lead up to the point that we're at now, but he has been out of the league for the past three years for supporting a social cause. And um, he felt that it was unfair. Um, there was a court case brought against the NFL for what he felt was unfair treatment to which uh, he took a settlement uh, and then decided that he still wanted to play for the NFL. The NFL recently, uh, last week Wednesday, recently, uh, called Colin Kaepernick and his uh, handlers, his people, and told them that he would have an NFL workout on Saturday. Um, they gave him the date and time of the workout, uh, told him the location. It was to be at the Atlanta Falcons uh, football facility and that he should be ready for this workout. You know, if he wanted to be considered, there would be NFL scouts, coaches, and things of that nature there representing a large uh, amount of the NFL teams that are in existence right now. He would get a chance to showcase the talent that he has, showcase that he has been ready for a certain amount of time and that he has kept himself ready for the moment where he got this chance to show everybody how good that he was and that he still was um, and possibly get a spot on an NFL roster. So that's the original plan. A plan that met with um, some pushback from Colin and his people, uh, his side. Uh, there was some issues such as a non-disclosure type agreement that the NFL was asking him to sign, which they were saying was a standard agreement that kind of said that uh, if Colin Kaepernick did not get selected by an NFL team after this workout, that he did not reserve the right to sue them if he was injured. Uh, during this workout in any way, shape, or form, he did not reserve the right to sue them. And um, his people did not think that this was a normal uh, agreement, so they didn't want to sign it. And there was also an issue of the crew that was going to film the workout. On the NFL side, they said that they were going to have a film crew available to film the workout like they filmed any other NFL workout. And that that video would be put together and disseminated amongst the, the league people that did not attend the workout so that everybody got a chance to see how Colin Kaepernick looked at this point in time, what his skill level was, you know, what his conditioning looked like, could he still throw the football, what his timing looked like. Um, on Colin Kaepernick's side, um, they said that they did not trust the NFL and that they felt that um, if left to the NFL's film crew, that they may splice the video, they may edit it in some sort of way to make it look like Colin Kaepernick had lost a step or, you know, he wasn't throwing as hard or far as he was. They may have selected bad passes that he made or missed passes, and, and those were the ones that they would put in this video, and they might leave out um, some of the footage where he looked better or he did do the things that he was supposed to do. So there was a lack of trust there. They wanted to bring their own um, film crew, and the NFL was not willing to allow... Uh, the film crew on to the facility, to the NFL facility. So that was another area that they had an issue. Another point of contention between the NFL and Colin Kaepernick's uh, people was that they wanted the media to be present at this workout. Uh, I guess to have um, everything open so that there'll be nothing hidden and everything will be transparent and everybody could see exactly what happened because the media would cover and, you know, the media could give a live kind of look into how things were going and what was going on. The NFL did not agree that that was, um, that wasn't normal protocol for these. It's a private workout pretty much. So they didn't think that the media should be present. So Holland decided to move the workout from the Atlanta Falcons football facility to 
a local Atlanta high school football field. Um, and then he did this within a half hour, like around a half hour before the um, proposed start of the workout. Um, to me, that was in poor taste. Um, if he didn't trust the way that the NFL was going to conduct this workout, um, he had time with which he could have said, I, I don't want to participate in this workout. Then he could have at another time set up his own workout um, in the, the high school facility or at any other facility that he chose where he would tell people, look, I'm holding a workout and you guys can come witness me work out if you want to and, you know, and select me or not select me on the merits of what I do during this workout. But what you don't do is allow the NFL to set up this workout for you and then wait until the wee hours right before the workout and change the location totally to another location that's 60 miles away from the prior location um, and kind of blindside the people. Because again, he was supposed to have 24, 25 representatives from teams there to see him work out. So you blindside these guys a half hour prior to your workout and let them know it's in a location that's, you know, 60 miles away from the original place where um, they thought it was going to originally be held. Now, uh, some people might say that that location was more central to the airport. So for people coming in, you know, instead of having to drive out to the location they were going to, they could go to that closer location and it, it maybe wouldn't put them that much out of the way. But what if you got there early? What if you had already started toward the other location? I think that that um, doesn't show consideration on their part for the people that have nothing to do with the owners because the owners aren't the ones that are coming out to watch. He has an issue with the owners. They will issue with how um, the NFL has treated him for the past few years and the owners have not allowed him to have a chance to have a job. Nobody's hired him. So for the people that were coming out to see this workout, I think this is a slap in the face to those people because they did take time out of their day, out of their schedule, even if they did not want to attend. They did, in fact, want to show up for this workout in the end and the change of location lost two thirds of the people that were coming. So out of the 24 to 25 people that were supposed to originally be coming after the relocation of the workout, you only had eight people that showed up to watch him throw. The way the workout started, was kind of interesting because he showed up to the workout modeling a Kunta Kinte t-shirt. Now, I've seen some commentators and fans and people saying things like, oh, but it's just a t-shirt. It shouldn't matter, you know, in the utopian world. It would have nothing to do with the outcome of his workout for the NFL, the fact that he wore a Kunta Kinte, a slave t-shirt um, to the workout. Um, it was also said that uh, Nike was planning on shooting a commercial with some of the footage that was coming out of this workout. The NFL said that Nike wanted to have a film crew present to shoot a commercial. They said that that wasn't the case and for to have the NFL retract that statement to say that they didn't actually have any film crew that was going to be there. But it was said, you know, a lot of sources did say that Nike was interested in shooting a commercial with some of the footage of, of stuff that he was doing during that day. And I think that wearing that t-shirt was probably something that was done for that commercial. But at the same time, I don't think that that was in good taste. And this is how you're introducing yourself to the people that are going to be observing you and then critiquing what you're doing um, for possibly giving you a job in their organization, you know, so... That's just my opinion. The workout itself, uh, it went pretty well because he he um, did choose his own receivers. That was another issue that he had. Um, prior to, the NFL had said that he wasn't even going to know who his receivers were going to be. So he flew in on his own dime. Um, some guys that he was more comfortable with to throw the football to. Some guys that he was familiar with. And he used those guys during the workout. So the workout itself, which was live and, and, you know, posted so people could view it on YouTube. It was on media outlets so that people could see this workout take place in real time. You know, he looked pretty good. His arm looked pretty strong. He looked like he was in very good condition, uh, moved around well, and he got got the, the passes off, you know, as, as well as probably could be expected 
for a quarterback in a workout situation. Like he completed all of the passes and went down. You know, they sh it, it showed him check down a list of different throws that he was going to do for the people that were in attendance. And he seemed to execute those well. So for the workout itself, that was something that went off without a hitch. My issue with that is, though, that it was never a question uh, if he was able to throw the football or not. That's not what got him into the situation that he's in now where he has not been employed for the past three years. So um, when he played, he was part of a team that competed for a Super Bowl. Um, you know, he was a Pro Bowl level quarterback during the time that he played until the end. At the, at the end, I think that, you know, due to a lot of the, the noise surrounding the social cause that he was supporting, you know, it caused some issues with him on his teams, and he, he ended up being like 1 in 10 in his last 11 games or something like that. But his skill itself was never really in question. Was he able to throw the football? Was he able to move around, um, you know, well? Was he athletic? Was he in shape? Um, his stature and size for a quarterback, very big, durable guy. That stuff was never in question. But then the way the workout ended is something that I think uh, spoke volumes over what actually took place during the workout. So after the workout, I think this is the point where it went from bad to worse. So it started out with the Kuta Kente t-shirt, which, you know, in my opinion, was not a good choice on what you might have wanted to wear to what is an audition, an interview for a job in an organization because it's, an, it's a t-shirt that kind of takes a jab at the organization with which you're trying to get a job. He ends it by um, making a statement for the media that was present. Again, this was also an issue between him and the NFL because if it's a, a private workout, it's just a workout for some teams. You're trying to impress some scouts or some people that, you know, have some pull with the owners of certain teams to bring you into these teams to possibly get a job. This is what you're supposed to be doing. But having the media there so that you can afterward make, you know, the statement that you're going to make looks like, uh, it, it makes it look publicity stunt-ish. Don't know if that's a word. Don't really care right now because you know what I mean. And uh, like I said, the Jack Daniels said it was a word. Um... He comes out and he pretty much says, I've been ready for three years. I've been denied for three years. We all know why I came out here, showed it today in front of everybody. We have nothing to hide. So we're waiting for the 32 owners, the 32 teams, Roger Goodell, all of them to stop running. Stop running from the truth. Stop running from the people. That's cool. If you're the ultimate warrior, oh, I'm showing my age again. Um, if you are uh, Kofi Kingston, somebody in the WWE that is trying to promote a wrestling match and you're sending this message out to Vince McMahon because, you know, this is all scripted and this is how they do things. You know, you want to razz your boss or burn Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince McMahon is a punk and he needs to do X, Y, Z. This is fine. This gets the fans all up in arms and they cheer and all of that kind of stuff. But you have a job, Kofi Kingston or whatever other WWE superstar. I'm sure my man will be able to give me some of them, but I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But you know what I'm saying. So what that does to your workout is you started on a note where you are trying to razz or poke at the organization that is supposedly considering giving you a job. Um, and then you end your workout after you have a pretty decent workout. You end your workout with a with a speech, with this statement, with this um, you know, this built up kind of Hollywood style WWE thing that's definitely going to annoy, offend, and and you know, make these owners and these representatives from these teams feel a certain way because they came to supposedly to give you a chance, which maybe he didn't figure that it was a real chance, but if he's saying that he wants to work for the NFL, because that's what it is, regardless of how many million dollar contracts you may have signed or touchdowns you threw, or, you know, how much you feel you're worth as a commodity to the league, you can stand on that and, and you know, buck against the ownership. Um, you can stand on that and try to tell them that they need to acquiesce to what you want them to do. And then the outcome of that you have to live with. So 
you know, if you go out there and you offend people or you make people feel a certain way and then they don't want to hire him, which is what I think is going to happen after this workout. I don't think that any of the eight people that did show up to that workout, um, he didn't throw the football in any otherworldly manner. He didn't, you know, stand in the end zone and then throw it out past the field, you know, into the town and hit McDonald's or something like that where they're like, oh my God, this guy's arm strength is something that we've never seen ever before and somebody has to have him on a team. What he did was he went out and, and, and made a decent account of himself during the workout. So people saw that, yeah, he's a viable option as maybe a backup quarterback or something in the NFL. He could do that. But then when you go make that statement, that speech after, what you show is that along with my talent, which is, you know, is pretty decent talent across the board with, you know, it's, it matches up with other talent that you already have. This is the baggage that I'm coming with. I'm coming with this, you know, you better treat me like this or you better, you know, allow me to do this or treat me in this manner or I'm not going to X, Y, Z, which is great. And, and this is why I started supporting him from the beginning before the settlement acceptance and non-disclosure and all of that kind of stuff. Because if you want to go and put your career on the line and step out and say, I'm, I, this is where I'm standing and this is how I need to be handled and this is how I think she, things should go. And if it's not going this way, then I'd rather have no way. I'm with you on that. But then if you're going to step up and say, this is how I think things should go. And if I can't have it this way, I'd rather no way. But I'm going to accept the, the chance to come back and work for you guys, knowing that they have not still accepted the his way or the highway. Like, he's saying it's my way or the highway, but the NFL guys are saying, well, then it's the highway because he hasn't been employed for three years. So if you're coming back to this workout, you're understanding that these guys are saying, let's see if you change your mind and you want to do it this way and you know you do what you did and kind of throw it all out the window i think that um my man Mello handled this situation the way that you would handle it if you are serious about wanting to continue to play for an organization that you may not agree with he may carmelo anthony uh play for the knicks you know then he played for the oklahoma city thunder then he played for the houston rockets and in each of, at the end of the Knicks and then those other two stops, he didn't feel like he was considered or treated fairly. He didn't feel like the situation was optimal and that they really even gave him an idea of what the true situation was going to be. He felt like he got scapegoated and things of that nature. But um, he, he, he went on record and did do interviews where he explained that I just want to play basketball. There were um, people that felt like he would not accept a uh, bench role that he would not accept this, that, or the third, that his mindset was of this nature. And he had a press conference with Stephen A. Smith, shout out to Stephen A., where he explained that I just want to play basketball. You know, I'm willing to accept um, whatever role I need to accept to be a part of this NBA because there's no one player that's bigger than the league. And those leagues are not perfect at any in any way, shape, or form. They're not perfect, but um, they are controlled by some powerful people that want things done a certain way. So either he could become part of that so that he could hope to try to break it up from the inside and, you know, use his voice as a player in the NFL to try to change things step by step. Or you could buck totally against the system and then say, I would never, you know, um, participate in that lead the way that is structured and go that route, which it seems that is what he's doing. But at the same time, he's trying to, you know, he's crying foul, saying that he's being mistreated, but he's not coming to the table and kind of, you know, laying his cards on the table. You said you want to work out. They say, come work out. You're saying, nah, the workout got to be like this, this, and that, and the third. So I don't think that we're going to see Colin Kaepernick employed by the NFL anytime soon. I really think that uh, he made kind of a mockery of this kind of opportunity because even if it wasn't a fair opportunity it was something that he could have um kind of if they're playing cat and mouse you know and he's saying boom this is my move and the nfl saying okay well you saying that we're not giving you a chance boom this is our move he could have came out there um performed to the best of his abilities even if it was 
in that altered workout to his own setup that he had afterwards he could have said look you know I did not I, I apologize to the team that could not be here today because I changed you know in the weaning moments before the workout I changed the location so it probably caused a difficulty on some people and I apologize for that but for the people that came out you know hopefully you guys got to see that I'm still able to compete I'm still able to produce at a high, high level um, for a quarterback. And hopefully you guys will consider me or consider bringing me in for another more in-depth workout. And hopefully I'll be able to be on the team and show you guys that for the past three years, I'll, you know, be humble and understand that it's not guaranteed. There are a bunch of people. There's probably people in the hood that can throw a football as well as Colin Kaepernick. But He's a person that took certain steps and measures to go the route to get to the NFL. So that's not, you know, I don't know how many people are in the league, but I'm sure that the percentage of people that can play football well, as opposed to the amount of people that are in the NFL is, you know, there are a huge percentage of people that are pretty decent at football and then a very, very small percentage that get that chance. So appreciate the chance. As always, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, because we can, many cannot, drinks, convo, uh, opinions, and sometimes social issues and stuff, always on the house. Until next episode, peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah.